Chapter 6 is a fascinating study in how that people can turn initially to Christ, but then drift away because they find discipleship simply too difficult. The long task of growing in Christ and coming to know Him. I trust that is not true of you, but that you are growing daily to know the Master and to follow Him, even though the cost may be at times heavy. In John chapter 6, we have the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and then walking on water. And Jesus talks to people about bread that doesn't come from heaven, but bread that truly satisfies, bread that gives life to the world, and the people respond, Lord, ever give us this bread, an eager response. They hear about something and they want it. They are eager to receive what the Lord has to, to give to them. But then Jesus continues to press on. He wants to take them by the hand and lead them that they might understand the ways of God. And so, soon they start to wonder, well, look, who is this man and who does he think he is? Isn't Joseph and his, and his father, earthly father, and aren't his brothers along with us? Who does he think he is? How does he say, I have come down out of heaven? But Jesus continues to speak to them about the bread of life, exactly what he is. I am the bread of life. But then the disciples come and they are speaking with Jesus and interacting with him. And Jesus now speaks to his disciples. And his disciples, the larger group, not just the twelve, but others who had joined together, they say, this is a hard statement. You see, Jesus had been talking to them about his flesh and his blood. He had been speaking to them about the absolute necessity of taking Christ and of feeding upon him. Not feeding upon his physical body, but feeding upon the words that he has to say and feeding upon him who is the Son of God. And many said, these are difficult words. Who can understand them? But Jesus, he understood that the people were finding this difficult. And as a result, we find that Jesus, instead of seeing the faces of people coming towards him, he now sees the back of heads that people walking away from him. We read in chapter 6, verse 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him any more. So Jesus said to the twelve, you do not want to go away also, do you? And Peter, he speaks up as he has on many occasions, but blessed Peter, he speaks up and he speaks on behalf of all of the disciples, and he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Let's consider that. To whom shall we go? In the book of Hebrews, we have the writing and an, an appeal that is made to believers who had once walked with Christ, but they are considering that the road of discipleship, the road of walking hand in hand with Christ, was becoming simply too costly, too painful, there was too much to bear, and they were wondering, maybe we should set it all aside and go back to our other old ways. But the writer to the Hebrews says, to whom shall you go? And he considers and he takes them through. Shall you go to Moses? Shall you go to angels? Shall you go to Aaron? Shall you go in some other direction? Who can compare with Jesus that he would be so wonderful. Lord, to whom shall we go? That's a good question for our world today. Our world searches in so many avenues and down up and up roads of this kind and of that. Oh, to whom shall we go? Shall we go to the entertainment world? Shall we go to the sports network? Shall we go to some other religion? To whom shall we go? Do they have words of life? Do they have words which satisfy? Do they have words which the soul can feed upon and find strength 
and blessing and encouragement and heaven at the end of that road. Peter answered him when Jesus says, are, are you going to turn your back? Are you going to go away from me? You who I have prayed over and who I have selected? J Peter says, oh, to whom shall we go? Peter also makes a great declaration in the second verse of these, this two-verse confession. We have believed and come to know. Peter says, we trust you. We have confidence in you. We haven't just had a warm, fuzzy feeling. We just haven't had a little bit of bread on the hillside to feed us for a moment but we have had our eyes opened to who you really are. Time and time again I've said to you that John gives at the, at the end of John chapter 20 the reason why he has written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And here Peter says, we have grabbed a hold of this. this. We have received and we have understood that you are exactly who you say you are. We have believed, and we have come to know. We do not suspect, we do not think about these things, but we have come to this firm conclusion that you are the Holy One of God. What did Peter mean by that? He means that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One that he is infinitely more than simply a prophet or a teacher or a rabbi of some kind, far more than Pharisee or scribe or Sadducee. He is the Holy One. You see, holy means separate. It means one who has been set aside for a specific purpose. Jesus, the crown prince of heaven, was set aside for this purpose that he might come to this world to redeem men and women lost in sin in the darkness of night. He was the one specifically chosen for the task of winning men and women back to God who has loved them with an everlasting love. God loves you, my dear friend. And God the Father has sent the Holy One of Israel. He has sent Jesus to die on Calvary's cross that you might know forgiveness of sins, that you might know that old weight that burden of sin roll off your back. Peter says, we know that this is who you are, the Holy One of God. Do you understand this, friend, that Jesus is here, that He has come, He has gone back to heaven now, but He continues through the power of the Holy Spirit to call men and women to draw them to Himself, that they might know God's forgiveness. Would you open your heart today? Would you say, Lord Jesus, I realize along with Peter and along with those disciples of long ago exactly who you are, that you are the Holy One. And we can't go any other place. We come to you and to you alone. Would you bow your head now and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and make me ready for heaven. Help me to walk with you moment by moment and day by day. Become a true disciple of Christ by repentance and by faith in Him. Do that now, my friend. Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.